They parted. My beloved husband was recently kidnapped by gypsies, and I must admit the experience has left me somewhat undone. Deprived of his protection, my children and I live like wild animals, demented by hunger and at risk of losing shelter as well. We are kept afloat by one hope, that, having been alerted to our plight, you will joyfully embrace your maternal responsibility and restore us to our former lives. Anxiously awaiting your reply, yours sincerely, Mary. Chapter 1, The Letter, by which our story begins. Good morning, Tilly. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Have a good day. Delivering a baby. How much time could it take? Well, she's been gone all night and half a day. This right now, Miss the Post. The post office can do without your hovering for one day. I'm not hovering. I shall die of shock if this mysterious letter ever arrives. Here's flower. That's all we have. We better put it away so it doesn't get wasted. What are you doing? Playing Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is two weeks away. I've been over the pantry. It seems we need pudding, cranberries, mashed potatoes, turkey, and pies. Basically everything. It's not like other years. We may not have a Thanksgiving, Solomon. This way we will be tempted. Watch yourself, Solomon. <coughs> Solomon! Then at least we can put it on the tablecloth. 
this another stitching project? We have much leftover cloth that can be cut into turkeys and pilgrims. We'll make it together over the next couple of weeks. Can I get the cloth? Everyone can cut the cloth. How's Mrs. Yule? She's very well, all things considered. Not well enough to pay. Kelly's cross about missing the post. I went by the post office on my way home. And? Gideon's back from college. Yeah, it's back. That's what they told me. Came home in the morning coach. Over there? <laughs> You're an angel. You're a saint. What about the letter? Doesn't matter. Gad's back. They're not going. Why shouldn't I? Mrs. Hopkins hates us. She doesn't hate us. She won't even know I'm there. What are you doing? Coming with you. Listen, you can't. Prudence, this is terribly important. Everything's important to you. Please, that is my guide. I should never do anything. I think Gad found our grandmother. The one mother won't talk about. And she's rich. Rich? Extremely. Oh, Tilly. I wrote her a letter asking for help, which Gad was going to deliver. Or she our grandmother. If mother found out, she would die. Which is why I need to speak with him privately. Perhaps you require more privacy? Gideon! He's meant for you. Why did you buy your gun? It was meant to be a surprise. Ow! Well, that was a nasty trick. Trick? Yes. You've completely changed. I could see you haven't. I've matured more than it might first appear. So I see. You've been away for decades. <laughs> How many languages do you speak now? Three? How are you, Tilly? <laughs> there must be a more compelling topic. Whenever I wrote to you about your father, you never answered. No one knows more about losing a loved one than I do. So let's talk about this, Gideon, please. Mother says that you're behind on the rent. There must be something I can do to help you. Give me your news. News? I 
see, I shall have to torture you, Lord Sticky Wicket, if I mean to get at the truth. <laughs> Never, Madam Busybody. I will die before giving up my secrets. <laughs> well-favored, and speech eloquent, and manner refined. Go on. She lives in a house as big as a palace, paintings by all the great masters. Name them. Cezanne. You lie. Degas. Gideon. She's well-read, keeping up with her in conversations like dancing on coals. My letter, was it delivered? Tilly. Did she read it? Yes. What did she say? She threw it away. I'm so sorry. Don't be silly. It's not right. Uh, after all, what did I expect? She doesn't know what she's missing. There must be some reason they haven't spoken in all this time. Don't forget. I was just saying to myself, I wonder how those poor children are doing, and here you are, right before my eyes. How is your mother? Very well. Oh, she must be dreadful. Such a, a robust husband stolen from her in the prime of life. It's late. Do give her my best. It's a pity they live in such wretched circumstances. They would otherwise be good company. Now I am so often alone. Tilda Bassett, inspired by your great words and noble countenance to ask for help. I've done all that is in my power to save my family. Without some intervention, we are sure to lose what little we have left. I make no frivolous petition. In return for your aid, I'm prepared to become your postulant, sacrificing my creature comforts entirely devoting my life and writing to the pursuit of nothing but beauty and truth.
to unravel the mystery of my mother. One thing I know about her past was that she at one time owned a skittish horse. That is how she met my father, Ellis Bassett. She was trapped under a bridge in Central Park, unable to get the terrified beast to move, until, happening upon them, my father began singing to it in Gaelic. According to him, by the time they got home, he had proposed. Years later, my father revealed that his songs were actually off-color jokes. The horse, like my mother, being badly in need of a good laugh. Holiday. Perhaps if you kept more reasonable hours, you wouldn't find it so difficult to rouse yourself. I'm awake most mornings before Prudence or Solomon. Let's <laughs> the pass. Look! Look at all the dresses! Mary Bassett, thank goodness. Someone who knows what to do. Is anyone hurt? The coachman. Where are you hurt, Jonas? Stand back now, clear the way, stay back. Well, I'm worried about that act. It could take a few days. Oh, well, that's all right. I'm here to visit my daughter. Your daughter? Well, who would that be? Chapter 2, Pandora's Box, containing, among other things, a great many dresses, a strained reunion, and a fox. You know what they say? After a society lady wears a dress once, she throws it away. Don't be silly. If she sold it off, I don't see why she can't find a place to stay. Why do I have to sleep up here? It's always so cold. Do you want a Thanksgiving turkey? Then you'd best behave. I don't know if you fit in such a small space. I consider ourselves fortunate. Present circumstances notwithstanding. You seem well? Well enough. 
You have your health. How long can we expect to indulge in these pleasantries? If you prefer, we can dispense with them immediately. What is it you require? Require? Money. I require nothing. Your husband is kidnapped, and you without the means to pay the rent. My husband is dead. I hope you didn't bring me here to make me a fool. Well, I didn't bring you here at all. Well, you must have known I couldn't read such a letter and put it aside. Letter? Well, that talk of wild animals and gypsies. It seemed you had become unhinged. I could not very well have that on my conscience, could I? Uh, this letter, may I see it? These are difficult times. I'm not always in my right mind. Kidnapped by gypsies. Live like wild animals. Seems I have overstated my case. I see. My children and I have no need of your help. I shall remove myself to a hotel. You're welcome to stay until your carriage is repaired. I don't wish to inconvenience you. It's the cause of this misunderstanding, it's the least that I can do. Simon! I think I shall lie down. Did you ask about my family when you had already taken matters into your own hands? My words must mean nothing to you. I don't know what else to do. Ever since your father died, you, you behave as if there's no one left. Have you once gone to bed hungry in my care? Have you been cold? No. I may not be as spirited as your father was, but I deserve your trust. I'm sorry. I just thought, with the holidays upon us, we've had so little. She's come all this way. Why don't you let her help us? The only person that my mother helps is herself. As a rule, it is advisable not to spy. In some countries, they gouge out your eyes. Solomon did not return the fox. He understood it was important to return it, if not to secure his Thanksgiving turkey, then for his mother's sake. But it had a certain hold over him like a four-leaf clover or a rabbit's foot. In its company, he felt braver and more certain than he had since his father passed away. He became convinced that as long as he kept it, they would all be protected from further harm.
How can such a man be? His name is Abel Yule, and he was injured in the war. He can't speak. We invited him to work so that his family would be taken care of. Education, tours of Europe, personal acquaintance with well bred men and women. Money is the only thing you can imagine wanting, isn't it? I fear there would come to this. You have no idea what it has come to. Ellis Bassett was a vagrant. A vagrant. He was the finest man I ever met in my life. To you and all your well bred friends. Chapter Three Fox in a Hen House. Mary Bassett, you do keep the most extraordinary secrets to think your father was Harold Caldwell, the greatest importer of silk and tea this country has ever seen. You are well informed. Oh, dear, and you, Mrs. Caldwell, are most fortunate to have had such a husband. I find liberty to be a better husband than he was. <laughs> Uh, it, it does seem frightfully early, I know, but as I said to Mr. Hopkins, I didn't want to miss the opportunity to meet. 
Put in the acid in it. Speaking of silk, Mrs. Hopkins, what exactly is the substance of your attire? It's so original. This, uh, it's flax. Flax. Isn't that what the poor ate for breakfast? Listen. Um, Mrs. Hopkins is, uh, in mourning. Hopkins lost three sons to scarlet fever nearly five years ago. I am so sorry. Since then, I can't bear to wear anything too fancy. If I may, Mrs. Hopkins, can I suggest that you let a little joy back into your life? Fine son here has just returned from abroad. Why not celebrate? Try a party. With flowers and music. Thank you, dear. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Mr. Hopkins. Thank you so much for having us. Dear? I saw the Collins family earlier. I think Mr. Collins died. I didn't want to say anything in front of Mrs. Hopkins. Knocking is always good. My mother doesn't want you here. Is that right? You're not nice. You made fun of Mrs. Hopkins and you insulted my family. My father was not a vagrant. Is there some reason you feel compelled to discuss this with me? Because I brought you here. I wrote that letter. You did? Yes. <laughs> well, that explains it. <laughs> Gypsies. How marvelous. I suppose you'll want to go. No. I have just found a reason to stay. The visit began to take on a different character, less guarded and more like a game, although who would enjoy it remained uncertain. Never mind, girl. It wasn't like this before my father died. <laughs> oh, women are too quick to give men credit they're not truly owed. You didn't know him. Perhaps I could be educated. Why did you call him a vagrant? Before he became a paragon, he was my stable boy. I suppose Tilly is still sleeping. You best wake her. She'll be late for Mr. Cartrude. This entire field was stones. People said nothing would grow here. 
That's why Mr. Hopkins rented it so cheaply. My father planted beans, and beets, potatoes. He could tell the precise day of the year just by looking at the plants. <laughs> my. Most people were improved by my father. Dad says he could reform the worst cynic in the world. <laughs> Shall I add cynic to my list of virtues? That's up to you. My father built this. I suppose he's the one who taught you how to write. No, he didn't know how to write. My mother taught us. How did he die? Working the fields. Mr. Yule found him crushed by a tree. You must miss him. My father said everything is a lesson from which we ultimately profit. Nevertheless, you have the right to complain. You're a strong young woman, like your mother. Once I beheld the splendid dream, a visionary scene of bliss. Truth. Wherefore did thy hated beam awake me to a world like this? Oh, I forgot about Mr. Carterhood. <laughs> Most people will have their Thanksgiving dinner and then it'll be gone. We'll have ours the whole year round. I like it better if there's pudding involved. <laughs> well, I think if your father were here, he'd find lots to love about this tape cloth. Can I put him on it? He'd like that. It's best not to distract Tilly. She's quite at sea when it comes to practical matters. She's up half the night writing stories, and she arrives late for work. Mr. Cartridge has already complained. Carterhood was wretched. Fortunately, he lectured me on my lateness, refused his soup, and held back half my pay. Well, on the bright side, Grandma seems happy. We might just get that turkey and pudding. One minute and I'll have the tea. You've done something. Absolutely. 
You have no right. Thank you. You hated it. I didn't say that. You didn't say anything. It is quite lively. Lively. Spirited. You did hate it. I like your people. You don't find them dull and ordinary. There is nothing ordinary about you. Or your people. I hate putting my characters in a place like this. Do you? What's wrong with a place like this? There's nothing but cows and fir trees. Well, if you don't like cows, maybe you should get out. <laughs> you mean leave? Travel, as I've done. Explore the world. People know what it's like. Chapter 4 Possible Allies. How long will it take? If it were up to me, she'd have it already. Cause oh, quite a stir, your mother. All the women coming in, trying to match her outfits. A couple more days. Could be a week. A week? European parts. Good luck, isn't it? She'll make the Hopkins party. says I should have a proper gown. Does she? Yes. She says the first impression is what one always remembers. I trust it does not owe solely to one's costume. The outward appearance affects the estimation of the rest. Do you hope to affect a particular person or just cause a general stir? We do not have Isabella's wardrobe at our disposal. I know. Sturdy shoes for 
my father had warned her they would do a great deal of walking. The embroidered shawl he gave her when they became engaged. And a porcelain cup. The cup was part of a tea service originally presented to Louis XIV in 1683, which Isabella had painstakingly reassembled on her many trips abroad. It was the only complete set of its kind. For most of my mother's childhood, Isabella had the service on proud display in the hallway. My father heard rumor that she kept it out after my mother left. The empty saucer a daily reminder of what had been taken from her. So glad to be back. Good to see you, old man. My dear, you look lovely. <laughs> oh, at last our guest of all, looking lovely as well. Good evening. Good evening. How wonderful. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, Mrs. Bassett. Hello, Mary. You must forgive us for staring. We are struck dumb. Praise more eloquent than any flattery. Your friendship is not what I crave. I'd always find you hiding somewhere. Under the piano, in the coat closet. Tilly's doing beautifully. You should see her. You shouldn't have given her the dress. Poverty was your choice, not hers. I don't want her regretting what isn't within her means. She can have whatever she wants. Not from you. So you continue to punish me for wanting you a better husband. Oh, tell the truth. When 
my left with Alice, you were relieved. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Well, why didn't you start me then? You made your choice. There was no choice. You never wanted me. My whole childhood, I saw you fewer times as some people see distant friends. You embellish. When you did come, I was kept out of sight by my governess. It was quick to remind me I must keep my distance or run the risk of shortening your stay. You had everything as a child. Complete freedom. Freedom is not what a child needs. You were no comfort. From the moment you were born, I felt your judgment. Judgment? I was a baby. How could I judge you? Approval for your approval. Oh. So deprived of approval for me, you will take it from Tilly. I have lost much this past year. I do not wish to lose my daughter as well. It's Tilly, come quickly. swinging open. What on earth are you doing? I had a grand time last night. <laughs> so did I. <laughs> Come to tea? Have you gone insane? I hope you don't treat all your suitors this way. Don't blame the poor boy. The idea was completely mine. I can't. I must work at Mr. Carteret's. Uh, it's been taken care of. And the king, considering it a great honor, plucked out the eye and gave it to me. Did you eat it? You've gone your whole life without fine food. One day it will not ruin you. No one shopping expedition.
ladies. An unforgettable day. Was <laughs> good. for you. Thank you. Perfect. Oh, oh. I see land. Pilgrims. They're having a feast. Sweet potatoes. Cranberries. Turkey. Not like how. Like how you're doing. Patience, child, you must allow an old woman to find her way. Perhaps patience is overrated as a virtue after all. <laughs> Mother. Look what we've done. She bought us everything. We shall have our Thanksgiving. It's lovely. Please, Mother, you've worked so hard, just enjoy it. It's wonderful. Now, if you'll excuse me. Where were you? With the youth. How are the children? I can't tell whether they're getting better or not. But you mustn't keep going there, Mother. Putting yourself at risk. Mr. Yule risked his life and saved your fathers in the war. We owe them our best efforts, at least. Please, Mother, don't go back again. You look tired. It's been a long day. It's not wrong what you did today. Mother is a person of unflagging piety. It might not be possible to equal her. Maybe we should try. Father once said Isabella's mistake was assuming he wanted money. What he really wanted was my mother's heart. A treasure far too fine to be traded for gold.
dear Mary, no doubt you will be surprised to receive this, knowing me to be a man who does not write. Not write. But I've been lucky enough to make the acquaintance of a Mr. Abel Yule, who has agreed to take on the task of our correspondence. Our paths crossed on a march through Charleston, South Carolina, where I found Mr. Yule endeavoring to free a small child from his hiding place in a drainpipe. Mr. Yule would not escort the boy to the Union camp, was ordered. He took him instead to the Confederates, hoping the child would find his family. The soldiers were so astonished they let us all pass without harm. His act, act of kindness saved us all. Until we're together again. Love it, Ellis. Mrs. Bassett, what a happy surprise. Please. You've just missed your lovely mother. I see. Yes, she's taken uh, Mrs. Hopkins on a uh, shopping spree. We hope to free her from these tiresome frogs. Yeah, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Caldwell has brought a great deal of life to this house. At a time when I had resigned myself to seeing my wife mourn for all eternity. I have come about the rent. My dear lady, do not trouble yourself. Since Mr. Bassett's death, you have been most generous. As you have been with my son. My mother appears anxious to interfere in my affairs. I am afraid she might approach you about settling my account. I prefer not to be indebted to her. Well, the rent, Mrs. Bassett, is no longer my concern. I met with your mother this morning. She purchased the farm outright. It belongs to her now. We do not choose our fate, Mrs. Bassett. This much I have learned. Well, one day uh, a man has a family. And the next his house is a tomb. Therefore, when a bit of good fortune lands on your doorstep, don't turn it away. Chapter 6 Devil's Bargain At what price do we secure our dreams? Mrs. Caldwell told him, ostentation is our only goal. <laughs> it succeeded admirably. Oh, Mrs. Bassett. We were trying the effect of Mrs. Hopkins' dress. I have been entirely carried away. I think it's lovely. Oh. I am told you purchased the farm. Perhaps this can wait. This farm? With what in mind? In my opinion, it is too far gone to be properly repaired. I plan to remove it. Good heavens. And where shall we live? New York City. With me. Now. Um, look at the time, Gideon. We, sh we should go. We'll find other lodgings. Let your resentments make you insensible. Resentments? Your children will be fed and clothed. Educated. Exposed to culture and art. Do you want all of them or just Tilly? Because if you only want one, there's no point in buying three. Your mother does have an impeccable pedigree. Oh, does she? Mary, my mother was born in a hovel, Mrs. Hopkins, the sort of place you're afraid to set foot in. Later in life, she became my father's nursemaid. They married when he became too senile to object, after which she persuaded him to leave his fortune to her. His children spent years trying to contest the will, but as luck would have it, she bore him a child. This made it difficult to have the will thrown out, as I was living proof of a legitimate marriage. 
My mother's pedigree has been collected by using her considerable charm to acquire associations like others collect works of art. Stop it! Whatever you say, she has made us happy. Anyone who is unhappy is free to leave. Like it that much? Everyone's looking for you. I know where to find you. What possessed me? You were angry. I shouldn't have taken grandmother's part. It wasn't right. Your mother was humiliating her. I said, why? I want to go. Go where? Anywhere. I've been wanting to go ever since my father died. The world is not quite so grand a place as your grandmother claims. My father used to say I was born for adventure. Do you remember how the three of us would go to the woods? <laughs> and he'd get us to imagine what it would be like. Be a mackerel in the lake or be in a hive. <laughs> so tightly. You're not like me, Mary. You won't fail her if you let go. I'm more like you than I thought. The way I went after you today. It's nice to know you have some fight. Drink. Oh. 
let the driver take you. Stop putting yourself in harm's way. So you have decided to return. Your mother was worried, as was I. You shouldn't have done it. My mother and father made this farm. It wasn't yours to take. She didn't say. It's not that many days. Till Thanksgiving. We won't be ready. Why does Thanksgiving matter so much to you? Because it's how in the world, right? Sweetheart, we are more than all right. Look! Oh, how pretty. You see? There's something to be thankful for already. I don't see why. Tilly, people get trapped in it. In winter, an entire family froze. Over the fire. You do not. Do too. We're hanging on it. We already have enough of it. What is if you do it the proper way? I think it's time for a story. What story? This one about a camel who bit me. I don't like camels. Hmm. What about pyramids? Do you like pyramids? You've seen pyramids? Mm hmm. I want a story about family. Something real. What about a castle? It's not real. It most certainly is. Your great 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 grandmother lived in one. Why? Was she a queen? She was a lady. Her name was Matilda. Like Tilly? Mm hmm. She lived a long, long time ago when there were. Knights and sword fights. And dragons? No dragons. But they had plenty of danger to keep them busy. Lady Matilda's father was in trouble with the king. Why was he in trouble with the king? Because he couldn't keep quiet like you. Most people felt he should go into hiding. But Lady Matilda's mother was dead, and he refused to leave Lady Matilda alone. In the end, 20 soldiers stormed the castle. They brought a battering ram to break down the gate. They took him away to prison. Lady Matilda wasn't much older than you. Did she cry? No, she wanted to save her father. She had to be very brave. I would have taken my father's sword and ran those soldiers through. Father had no sword. Neither did Lady Matilda. She had great spirit. She put all the gold and all the family jewels in a basket with bread and fruit. In the middle of the night, she stole one of the soldiers' horses. She 
road to London. She went straight to the king and offered the treasures in exchange for her father's life. Now the king was so moved at her courage that he agreed. Lady Matilda's father was released from prison. Poor in property, but richer than a king in family. for the doctor and any other expenses he requires. He requires nothing. Well, what is his condition? Dead. Dead? Quite. a stranger indeed who has not heard of that terrible disease that is usually known as scarlet fever. It begins with a slight indisposition, much resembling an ordinary cold, until the fever suddenly increases. Then the rash comes from which the disease gets its name. Then the patient is afflicted with a cough quickly succeeded by the most distressing asthmatic symptoms, under which the poor creature struggles until released by perfect suffocation or stoppage of breath. The lucky one survived. Why did I bite you? It appears not to have liked the feathers in my hat. Camels are notoriously fussy. How is she? She's past the contagious stage, so all we can do is wait. Never you mind about me. 
It's a relief, really. He was lost already. You take good care of your mother. She's done so much for us. She used to laugh more. You know, for dear Paul was alive. to have her, your mother. The other day she implied that she was conceived in order to guarantee my financial security. She was angry. Yeah, she was right. I used her. It's very difficult to be in her company. I traveled often coming home for meetings with his estate lawyer. He was a good-hearted family man. So I put your mother in pretty dresses. I took her to the meetings with me. Over time, he became sympathetic to us. Pressed the other beneficiaries to settle their case. Till I received your letter, I considered myself lucky to have acquitted myself so admirably. Why are you telling me this? So you won't make the mistake of excusing me. Telling yourself as I did that it could not have been helped. of cold water.
at all. What is it? It's mother. I sent for the doctor, but he hasn't come. The coach must have gotten stuck. What can they do? I Scarlet fever. That's what the boys had. The carriage won't go. I'm going to have them try the sleigh. Are you all right? Gideon. Don't. Don't talk about it. I must talk about it. Everything's all upside down. I was wrong to think of leaving. I see that now. I love you. And I love my family. I was too forward. Do you love me? What do you think? If we were married, how would we be? Tell me. Could we live near my family, see them as often as we like? Their family to me? Put that back. It's Thanksgiving tomorrow. We can't make a turkey. Sure, we'll get better if we don't. It smells burnt. It's only been ten minutes. We could check. No, that dries it out. Who's lived longer, you or I? What's happened? Where's mother? She's in her room. Is she better? No, she's not better. Where were you? The Hopkins. The Hopkins. That's right. Well, this is hardly the time. It's hardly the time to roast a turkey prune. Don't say a word about that turkey. It's the only good thing that's happened in months, and I won't have you ruin it. I forbid it. At least I'm doing something. I suppose this means I wasn't doing anything. I remember. I've had to be sensible, reliable, Organized while you sleep late, forget your chores, write sonnets. I've never written a sonnet in my head. It doesn't make a bit of difference, does it? You still end up with everything. That's not true. Father took you to the woods. You and Gad. Where was I? You hate the woods. How would I know? I never got to go. What if she does?
broken. It seems your mother will be fine. the yules. Grandmother's carriage got stuck at the end of the road. The coachman and the footman were digging it out all night. And what else happened while I was occupied? Yet proposed. And I've accepted. Is that so? But you wanted to be a writer. That was ages ago. Should car? We can't uh, start. 
Not till Mother comes. Oh, Solomon. Oh, the poor woman is just recovered. It's not Thanksgiving if she's not with us. Solomon, Mother, needs rest. Don't be silly. This is better, sir. This is what I need. Mother. I heard a voice say something about Thanksgiving. Was that you, Solomon? There's lots of food. Madame, <laughs> <laughs> oh, please allow me. Thanks for the roses by the wayside. Thanks for thorns their stems contain. Thanks for home, and thanks for fireside. Thanks for hope, that sweet refrain. Amen. for a famous writer to travel the world looking as wrinkled as a prune. Don't make me cry. Don't forget me. That's impossible. For luck. 
<laughs> we'll leave the small bags tonight, and the big bags we can leave on the carriage. I can't go. Your father didn't permit the word can't. I left my home in anger. You're leaving with all my love and support. I was happy. You'll find more happiness. Come back for dinner any time. Okay. <laughs> oh. For you. Goodbye, little puppet. Can you see macarons? And mazepin? And chocolate? Bye, you big strong Thank you so much, Dad. Take care of her. Oh, you and Alice raised her well, Mary. She can take care of herself. hills lived a man, his wife, and a pile of sturdy children. We were poor in money, but rich in land and love. The wide acres of wood, corn, and pasture fed and clothed the flock, while mutual patience, affection, and courage made our old farmhouse a very happy home. For those who dream of adventure, it may seem too simple a place to start our story, until we remember that the best adventures begin with simple things. Not gypsies, or sword fights, or dragons, but hope and family and love. Hey! Hey! Right! <laughs> oh, wait. I love you. 